Travis here with Upgraded RC. Well, it's cold here in Colorado right now. I woke up this morning with it negative four degrees, so I doubt I'm gonna be going out to run my car today. Anyway, I already had it kind of apart. <laughs> we, uh, I'm rebuilding the front and rear differentials on this, so I've got it down this far right now. I figured while I got it down this far, let's go ahead and take our center dip out here. Some of you guys call that the transmission. It's not really a transmission though, there's no gears in it, it doesn't shift, it's just got a torque biasing gear in it, which basically controls the amount of power from the front and the rear wheels. So that, I mean, essentially you should have it locked up in a rear four wheel drive where your front and your rear are constantly turning. Um, here we've got a torque biasing gear so that if you come off a jump and land really hard, instead of locking up the drive shaft and all of your transmission and your differentials and busting gears and drive shafts it's meant so that it gives on a hard landing so that it may throw more power to the rear than the front or more power to the front and the rear depending on how you land it's there to save your gear train so we're going to go ahead and change our fluid out in this today um, it comes stock with 20 million weight fluid from Traxxas we're going to go ahead and just take that out and put it right back in so my car is mostly apart here, but what you're going to want to do from here is go ahead and take off this air vent for your battery box here. And that way you can get to this Allen down here, which you don't need to take all the way out. You just need to turn it out about a turn and a half, two full turns. And when you take this one out, that gives you enough play to be able to slide your motor backwards. And go ahead and take that Allen out there so you can get your gear cover off. Once you've done that, you're going to flip it over and go ahead and take off your drive shaft here and here with those two little two millimeter allens and then you've got four more two millimeter allens here and when you take them out your center diff is going to push out this direction um, if you had your bulkheads and everything still in the car and you just want to do this do this center drive it's not really that big of a deal um, basically you would do everything i told you as far as the motor and the air vent and the cover goes and then flip it back over and take your skid plates off obviously and just disconnect your drive shaft here and here in these four bolts and push it out it's the same thing whether your bulkheads are on it or not well, i'm going to go ahead and do that now so we can get our center drive out okay guys so once you get your center drive out this is what it's going to look like if you notice i didn't want to take my motor off because i hate these connections they're so tight and hard to get out i usually you know busting my fingers and stuff so i like to just leave those together um, I, so I left my motor around here and I just took three rubber bands and put them around here that way I could pick the car up and and do this no problem at all and it's not going to fall out on me so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the center drive well here's our center drive we've got the uh, spur gear right here on the front and here's our torque biasing gear down here and here's what it looks like from the other side and this is where your motor mounts to right here okay well let's go ahead and we're going to take off oops, sorry about that we're going to take off these three pan head allens here so that we can remove our spur gear and then after that we're going to take off these three countersunk allens here to remove our clutch and then we can have a look at that and we'll pull that off the shaft then we can go ahead and open up the center drive and guys from here on out I would recommend doing the rest of this project with an Allen by hand instead of a power tool. Um, especially here on the spur gear. You know how many times you're going to have the spur gear off wanting to change it out for a different size and stuff like that. You can't be stripping out all these screws in here all the time. So uh, I would recommend a hand Allen from here out. So once you get your three countersunk screws done in your cover here, go ahead and pull your cover off. And underneath you're going to see a washer that has actually got two little pieces of plastic here these tabs and what they do is when this comes comes up here on your clutch when that comes up these little tabs lock into place so that when you tighten that back up it makes it nice and tight so we'll set that aside and we're gonna push it down and we're gonna push our pin across and slide our pin out try not to lose that's pretty small then we can pull our whole clutch assembly off and we can pull out our clutch, the alabaster piece here, kind of like rubber. Looks like we got a little bit of wear going on right here, um, where this piece in the center 
It was rubbing up against it. I guess it was hitting right there. So you can see I've got a little, let me pull this out, there we go. I got a little tiny, tiny bit right there of wear. That's not too bad. Um, I probably will go ahead and change this out. But just so you guys know, um, if you're someplace, a track or something, you got, you got to get away with what you got. This was rubbing on that edge right there on that edge of the metal. So if you were to take and just turn this clockwise one position, that would make it rub on the piece next to it. Now it's not going to last as long as a brand new one, but it would probably get you out of a bind. But honestly, guys, as far as that goes, this little piece here, your clutch gets a little bit worn out. I wouldn't even second guess it. Put a brand new one in it. You see how much that is for a brand new one? $2.50. That's pretty much nothing. If you're in here, uh, I wouldn't do it every time you change a spur gear or nothing, but I'd do it probably every 30, maybe 40 runs. Um, just go ahead and replace it. Once this starts stripping, and you know what I'm talking about when you're trying to take off and it just seems like it's, it's stripping out. Once that starts doing that, just replace it. It's not necessary. It's not good for anything. Okay, guys. So we got our clutch assembly off, and you can see this is the shaft that turns the torque biasing gear. Let's go ahead and open that up now. And basically, we're going to take out... Actually, do this first for me. Why don't you guys see if you can turn turn this by hand. I bet you can't. If you can turn that by hand, you don't have enough fluid in here for sure. But what you can do is you can take our drive shafts that we took off, we got it sitting over here, and just go ahead and stick them back on there like this. And you can turn it with your hand now. Oh, you can feel it. It's pretty tight. Compared to the other diffs that I rebuilt earlier, um, this, this one is, is really, really tight. So once you feel that, so you can kind of feel how tight it is before we take it apart, and then when you put it back together, you kind of figure out what you're going for. And I would say that this is a safety issue for those rough landings, and if you run into a wall and stuff like that we were talking about. Um, so it's got to have a little bit there. I'm going to think I'm going to tighten mine up just a hair more, but it's got to have a little bit. So let's go ahead and open it up. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take out this Allen and this Allen and this Allen, this one, this one, and this one. So go ahead and take all those out and then we'll gently pull our cover off. We got all of our Allens out here. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I've already had this open once about three weeks ago. I was going to replace it then, but I didn't have the 20 million diff weight. I was going to use some blue Vanquish and put it in the tranny or the uh, center diff, but I decided not to. So I just greased up some of the uh, other gears here with it. Let's take this out. So this is our torque biasing gear. And this is basically set up the same exact way that the differentials are. Um, there's just a couple different components in it as far as the retainers and stuff like that are a little bit different. Um, let's set this aside here. And you can see the blue Vanquish I've got inside my housing. It works really good. I like that stuff. Um, here is the gear where our clutch goes through. I believe this is called the top gear or something like that. Top shaft. And then we've got our idler gear in the center here that runs one, runs that, runs the other. So we're going to go ahead and clean all this up really good. Yeah, I like to take all my bearings and lay them down flat and then spray them with this right here. It's a WD-40 Specialist, the gel lubricant. It's really, really good for your bearings and stuff, and uh, it won't fling off, so it's supposed to stay in there. What I do is I put it on. It's a foam application, and I let it set for a couple minutes, and then I, then I take and uh, spin it around with my fingers, and then I'll flip it over and do the other side and just let it set for, oh, I don't know, at least a half hour or so. And then when you get done, you pick it up and you'll wipe the bearings back off clean so no dirt sticks to the outside of them and the inside you'll have this gel inside there so I think that works really good just want to let you guys know that well, here's everything pretty clean after I got done with it and I am a stickler about being clean I really I think it's very important to get things clean um, whatever you had in here before as far as lubricating the gears uh, uh, the grease or the fluid whatever you had in here um, as time goes on, it picks up dust, it picks up dirt, uh, the debris, you might get something off of plastic, you might get a sliver off this metal here. Um, all that stuff's in your uh, fluid or your uh, grease, so to speak, so you need to get rid of that. And this is nice and clean, so when you put your new fluid or grease back in here, you're not having to worry about the contaminants 
uh, wearing down other things here. It just makes everything last longer. Um, I cleaned everything up, just so you guys know, you probably heard me say this before too if you've seen other videos, but I cleaned everything up with WD-40 and a toothbrush and a Q-tip and a rag the best I can and it comes out really good that way. Um, just don't clean any of your clutch components, the housing or the alabaster or this metal piece or this with the WD-40 because it's just going to cause your clutch to slip more and uh, prematurely wear out. You don't want any lube in here at all. You want that dry, 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 and dry. So let's go ahead and take our torque biasing gear into here now. We're going to tear that apart and clean that up too. So if you happen to get unlucky like me, these four screws that are in here, these Allens, I ended up stripping three out of the four out. So I had to take them out with an extractor. This is the only one that came out nice. Just so you know that, the factory seems to put everything either way too tight or not tight enough. Okay, let's open this up here for the first time. Oh, it's kind of tight. Gently. Okay, so here's our torque biasing gear. And here's our seal that goes down in here. And then we've got our shaft here. Huh. And that goes through there like that. And then we got our gasket here. I think it's a rubber gasket, but I would still be very gentle with it. It's probably fragile. There we go. And now here's the center of what we got. Let's go ahead and push these out here. Boy, that's really tight. Okay. Now that we got this out here, let's inspect this a little bit here. I notice it's got notches here on these retainers. It's a little bit different than the differentials I did earlier. So those notches have to go to the housing. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull it out. Okay, so we got our center differential all tore down and cleaned up. I thought I'd explain a couple things to you guys before we put it back together here. This is your torque biasing gear right here. Nice big beefy gear. And then you've got a seal that goes inside here. And this is your longer output shaft that goes through the torque biasing gear. And on the other side, you've got a short output shaft. This is the one that gets that thin washer seated up against the back of it to protect the seal. So the seal goes into the housing, and then the washer goes on the output shaft and it goes in. Um, I wanted to show you guys something here. Let me zoom in here on... So these are your spider gears right here, and these are your retainers, or spacers is what the book's calling them. I call them retainers because it's keeping the spider gears in there, but I guess you could call it spacer also because it's keeping the spider gears a certain distance off the housing. Anyway, check this out. Let me see, I'll just get a pick here to show you guys. Can you see the difference here on, on the one end and the other? There's like a, it's kind of like a, an arrow. It, it kind of points, points in one direction. And then you'll, not, you'll notice you've also got this rib on top. So it's pretty obvious to everybody that the rib goes to the outside. You can see inside the cup here. And let me see. You can kind of see how the rib's down there. So when this goes in, you're going you're gonna to put it in like this with the arrow facing down. And it's going to go into the cup like this. And see how it sits nice and smooth in there? If you put it in the other way, which it will go, that is incorrect. It doesn't seat all the way down. And what's going to happen is it's going to offset your cross pins and tear your spider gears up. Now this was told to me directly by Traxxas when I called to see what kind of weight and how much we're supposed to put in here. He told me to make sure they go the correct direction or you will destroy your spider gears like he did. So I'll see that little arrow right there. In your drive cup here, the arrow goes in to the drive cup and all the way down. It smooth suits really nice. It seats in there great. So that's how that's done. Just so you guys know, very, very important. 
And then before you guys put this back together, you're going to want to make sure you inspect all the teeth on all your gears, um, on your shaft. You know, you want to inspect those teeth and make sure the shaft's still nice and straight. And your, your seals need to be pliable and not torn or anything. Um, you're going to want to inspect all your spider gears to make sure all the teeth are good there as well. Your other output shaft, you're going to want to make sure your gasket's not ripped or torn. It's in good shape. Um, that's about it. And then we can go ahead and put that back together. And we'll be using 20 million diff fluid. It's called 20 million weight fluid from Traxxas. There's, uh, there's nothing fluid about it. Matter of fact, it's the only fluid that I have called a fluid that doesn't get one of these things on top of it. I mean, all my other fluids get this. How come I don't get one with this? <laughs> You're going to have to take this out with a screwdriver because it's actually more like putty. I guess you could use a putty knife too. So that's why you didn't get one of these. Let's move over to this side where I can show you the components inside the housing other than the torque biasing gear. This is your housing here. And you've got your bearings that go inside your housing. And then this here, which I was calling a top gear, this is actually called an input shaft. And you've got your spur gear here. This one in the back, this is your idler gear, um, your idler shaft. And then obviously you've got your drive shaft and your, uh, your air scoop there for your battery and your cover. Now this, this right here for your clutch, this is called elastomer. That's for your cush drive. This is your drive key. So your housing, your elastomer, your drive key, and the other housing combined together make up your cush drive. Now one thing I did want to show you on this side over here that I think is very important and a lot of people don't tell you that. When I took my housing apart, um, it didn't really fall apart, but I wasn't exactly sure where that washer right there went. So I went ahead and looked it up and just so you guys know, it goes right here on top of your input shaft. And that is to keep the distance from the bearing that goes there just a little bit away from it so it spins real free. So just so you guys know, that's where it goes. Okay, so to start guys, you're going to want to go ahead and take your seal and put it down inside your housing like this. And it's a little bit of a tight fit, but you can kind of just turn your finger around like this and push it in until you get it nice and seated in there and flat where it's supposed to be. Then you got the other one here, and this one goes in the center of your torque biasing gear. Let's go ahead and put that one in. Once again, spin it around with your thumb, make sure it's nice and seated in place. Works out great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do after I get my seal seated in there, is I'm going to take just a little bit of my 50,000 weight diff fluid, and I'm going to put it on the shaft here, just like a drop. There you go, that might have been too much. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to spin it around the shaft and lubricate the shaft so that when I stick this shaft through my seal, it's not going to destroy it or rip it in any way. The other benefit to putting this oil on here, or this fluid I guess, is that you can take this big washer that goes on here and make sure it's nice and seated where it's supposed to be. The diff fluid will hold it in place. Other than that, I'm going to take some more excess off this shaft and put it on the, this side of my washer here. That way, that'll protect my seal. Okay, now that we've got the shaft lubed up and our washer in place where it's supposed to be, and there's only a washer on this side that goes into the cup. The other side does not have one. We're going to go ahead and stick our output shaft into the washer here, very gently. You're going to want to turn this side to side with your finger until you get it all the way in. And then once you get it in, go ahead and turn it and make sure it turns freely and it's seated properly and there's no obstructions. We're going to do the same thing with this long shaft here. We're going to go ahead and stick that through our seal. I've, by the way, I went ahead and put some 50K on that as well just to protect the seal. I'm going to turn it back and forth and gently slide it through until you get it in there and then you can check this side as well and make sure it turns freely and there's no obstructions. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and open up our 20 million weight fluid here. Let's see what this is. Ah, look at that. Crystal clear. <laughs> it's just like bubble gum. Huh. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of this out with a screwdriver. And I'm going to put a small amount on top of this gear before I put my spider gears on. Well, what I did 
is I just took a screwdriver and pulled a little bit out of our container here and put it down in here and then kind of just packed it with my finger and pushed it around. Now I think it's important that you don't put so much in there that you're packing it into these channels right here where our retainers go. Um, I believe that it's, if you do that, the retainer is not going to sit flat all the way down and it's going to cock your cross pins again and cause some problems. I, I mean, it's not really a fluid, it's not like oil, so you do got to think about that, but I bet once you get it pushed together and spin it around a couple times, it would seat anyway. It's just going to make it hard for installation. So just so you guys know, I put it around on the top, I packed that little hole in the center as much as I could because in the future, if you don't pack that hole, then all your fluid or putty is going to go down into that hole and then you'll have less on your spider gears and it won't seem the way it was when you put it together. So you might as well go ahead and pack that hole tight. And I just covered the top of the gears the best I could with my finger. Once again, not putting so much that it filled up the channels. So for the next step, you're going to want to be able to hold your differential upright in something so that you don't have to worry about it falling over. Um, I've got a 30 millimeter socket here that works pretty good. Not that everybody has a 30 millimeter socket laying around, but I happen to and it works good for me. You can find something somewhere. You can drop that in there and that'll hold it upright for you. What we're going to do is we're going to take a cross pin and a spider gear and we're going to put the spider gear uh, smaller side facing in on both ends. And then we're going to put our retainers on or our spacers. And remember, you want the rib out and you want the arrow down. So, rip out, arrow down. Rip out, arrow down. Very important. It'll cause catastrophic failure. And then we're going to go ahead and separate this. And a lot of people will put these together, all spider gears at one time. I like to do it half and half. It's just easier for me to get it on there. So, we're going to drop this down in here keeping in mind the way that our retainers go and then push it over to the side here it's kind of a tight fit you should get that where you think you want it take it back out of this and make sure it's pushed down and go ahead and turn it turn it and work it just a little bit it's really really hard to do that putty is pretty, pretty tight but if you work it just a little bit that way you know it's seated all the way down and everything's turning correctly. Well, after you get that in there and it spins pretty good and feels good, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again with the other side. You're going to want to, after you get done turning it, make sure that your cross hatch and the pin is facing up. And then we're going to put our spider gear on the other cross pin and our retainers. Once again, rib out, arrow down. Separate our gears a little bit so that we can pop this into place. Takes a little bit of managing there. Once you get that in there, push it down with your finger. And let's go ahead and turn it again to make sure that we're working really good here. And that way you can make sure that your cross pins have met the hatch marks and they're pressed into place exactly where they want to be. Um, I'm checking the top again. I can see all the top of my retainers. And I can tell that I don't have the arrow up, so I know I put that in correct. Just double checking. I'm going to spin this around a little bit more using my finger to push it down so it doesn't come up. Feels pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and put some more in. So you're going to want to pack it about like this. I kept turning my gears around with a pair of pliers on the bottom and pushing my pins down and uh, just packing it and working it with my thumb the best I could. And uh, after I was done, I stuck a screwdriver there to make sure that all the retainers and all the pins are as far down as they could possibly be. And then I continued to pack it to where it's below the top of the differential housing, um, but it's a little bit above the gears. You want to make sure all your gears are covered. Other than that, you don't really have to pack it. It's kind of preference to you. I want mine almost as packed as I can get it. Um, but uh, you want to make sure that the top of the retainers here or your spacers don't have any fluid on it. So they're clear. That way, when you put your 
torque biasing gear back on, these notches right here drop down and hold your retainers where they're supposed to be and there's no fluid in between for obstruction. Um, other than that, smooth it out the best you can, make sure you're over the top of the gears, that's about it. And we'll go ahead and put it back together. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and pack this too for the same reason I told you on the other output shaft so that um, if there's not any fluid in here, that fluid is going to eventually end up in there and you'll have less than your spider gear. So I'm going to pack that too and we'll go ahead and put this back together. Okay, and I'm putting just another light coat, almost like just a glaze or a film of that 50 weight on here. Just a hair so that it'll hold our gasket in place. When you're looking at your gasket, you'll notice one side's flat and one side's kind of got a rounded top edge. You want the flat side to go down to your differential. So put it on there very gently where it needs to go. Go ahead and press it down. And the 50,000 weight gear lube will do the rest so it wasn't, won't fall off. Now you can go ahead and put this together very gently. We'll go ahead and line up our slots. And just kind of set it over very gently here. It's going to be a little bit tough to get down. Now if you're having too, much pro too many problems, I recommend, and I'd probably do this anyway, just take your pliers and turn this just a hair in either direction. What that's going to do is help you line up the gears and make sure they're correct so that it seats and goes down all the way around. It's nice and smooth before you start tightening it down. Otherwise, you're, you're torquing on a gear and it's not lined up anyway. It's just going to, you could possibly break something, but it's just going to cause you problems. So make sure that's seated all the way first and then go ahead and put your screws in. And I got some new stainless steel screws here because my uh, stock ones were all stripped out. Well, let me put just a little bit of Loctite on this too before I stick it in. So we'll stick just a little bit of Loctite on here before we put it back in. That'll actually, believe it or not, that's going to make it easier to come out the next time I rebuild this. Because the Loctite will hold it in there and keep it from coming out, but it will also make it come out easier because the threads are coated with Loctite and it's not steel to aluminum so to speak. Now we'll go ahead and grab this and start putting our screws in here, our Allen's. And I would recommend that you do all this hand tight. It's just not necessary for anything else. Don't go down until you seat it. Take them in a star pattern or a cross pattern. We don't have a star on this, I guess it's not a tire. But just try to go evenly all the way around so that you're not warping the differential any at all. And that way you can make sure everything's all lined up too. So once you get them all down to the bottom, to where you feel they, they stop, and then back it back off just a hair, now we're going to go ahead and actually tighten them up. So we're going to turn this one until it seats. And then we're going to go across to this side. And we're going to turn this one until it seats. And we're going to go to here. That one until it seats. And this one until it seats. Now we're going to do that again. Go a little bit tighter this time. Now we're going to this side. Going a little bit tighter. We'll go to this one. Oh, that feels pretty good. All right, now I'm just going to go all the way around a couple times here and just make sure that everything is nice and snug about the same. So I didn't do one too much on one than the other. Just go all the way around that. I'm going to do that a couple times to make sure it's good. So once you get that all nice and tight and even, and you know, you don't really have to kill it. Don't torque it too much. Um, that's why we've got our blue Loctite in there. So we get it nice and snug and fairly tight, but just don't kill it. Um, if you have any diff fluid coming out of the side here, any of your 20 million weights coming out, that means you put too much in. So take it apart and take just a little bit out. If this does not go all the way down, nice. And it seems like as you're trying to start your screws, it just won't go because you can't push it together. You have too much diff fluid. So you should have just the right amount in there pretty packed but you want to make sure you left room for your output shaft to get in there into the spider gears and not push all this fluid out the sides. The next thing I want to do, I don't never see anybody do this on the other videos, I like to take my drive shafts here and temporarily throw them on there real quick so that I can turn this and see. Remember when we started this project I told you guys to turn it and see how stiff it was? Well it's supposed to be about the same. And you know what? Mine is just a little bit more 
It still works though. It's still got the safety factor. I think that's great. That's awesome. So that turned out really, really good. Let's go to our next step. I'm going to start with here. We're going to take our housing and our bearings and just kind of pop the bearings right back into the housing. They go in real easy. And we've already made sure that our bearings feel really good and we've lubed them up and they're uh, very happy right now. Move over to the other side here and drop our bearings in here. The one for our input shaft right here. Kind of being a pain. And the other one. So next we're going to go ahead and put our center diff back together. We got all of our bearings in here and they're nice and lubed up so now we're going to go ahead and lube these up before we stick them back in there. I'm going to lube up the torque biasing gear and I'm going to lube up all the gears on the input shaft and the idler gear. Um, I know from Traxxas there's not very much on there at all. Uh, I don't even know what kind of grease it is, but it doesn't do a very good job. The last time I had this apart, I went ahead and put that uh, blue Vanquish grease in it, the stuff that I just took out of it. Um, I think it's really good. I'm not knocking it at all whatsoever. I just, uh, I'm always looking for something better. And I think we're going to go ahead and try this. This is uh, that WD-40, the gel lubricant. Um, it's a no-drip formula. It's supposed to stay on whatever you spray it on. Let me see here. It says uh, no mess, uh, no flinging for, for moving parts, self-healing protection, uh, displaces water and moisture. Um, it says that it withstands temperatures from negative 100 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great. Um, it works really good on my bearings, and it's a gel. I think I'm going to go ahead and we're going to stick this in here. It's going to be kind of like chain lube. You know, it even shows on here that it's good for gears, good for chain, good for bearings. I don't know what that is, but it lasts 12 times longer than the stock WD-40. And I'm a real popular fan of WD-40. Now, it's not a very good lubricant, but with this gel, I think we might hit a home run here. So we're going to go ahead and try that. Okay. It tells you to shake this can up for about 20, 25 seconds. I've been shaking it here for a little while. We're going to go ahead and spray it on here. Now it comes out in a foam and it's pretty aggressive. I'm just going to go ahead and coat all my gears here on the input shaft with it kind of lightly. Just go all the way around with it. Okay, so that's what we're doing to our gears here. I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, idler gear and the torque biasing gear as well. And we'll put it in here and see what's going on. All right, we went ahead and put some gel lubricant on our idler gear and our input shaft here. And when I'm spinning it, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks like there's a pretty decent amount of cohesiveness between the two of them, which is really good. That means that this lubrication is staying stuck to the gears and not falling off. And you can see as I turn this upside down, it's not wanting to drip off or run even if I let it set. So that's really good. Now, uh, one thing I was thinking about, guys, is this C drive is sitting in the car like this so that your torque biasing gear is on the bottom. That's really good. If we happen to get a little bit of runoff from here or something, say you're not running your car for like four months or something, well, all this, this lubrication, if it does come off, it's not supposed to, but if it does come off, it's going to end up in the bottom right here due to gravity. Well, guess what? The next time you go use your car, your torque biasing gear right here with the teeth on it here, as soon as you turn it, it's going to pick up all that lubrication that's in the bottom and it's going to redistribute it to all the other gears. So I think this is going to work out really good, this uh, gel that's kind of like chain lube. Anyway, let's go ahead and coat the rest of this one and I'll put it back together. So here it is all lubed up. Boy, it looks like it's, uh, it's going to be great. I got to tell you, the amount of resistance on here is way less than what I had with the grease. Um, I like that. That's less resistance against my clutch and my motor. So this this might just be that home run, guys. Let me go ahead and put this back together. Don't forget your little washer that goes right here on top of your input shaft. If you're wondering where that goes, that's where that goes. Make sure it's on there or you won't have the distance right here between your bearing and that shaft that you need and it's going to cause problems for you. Well, let's go ahead and button it back up, guys. So when we're tightening down these guys, what I like to do is go ahead and get the, all of these down to where you start to feel them tight and then back it off a hair and do that on all of them all the way around kind of evenly 
then we're going to go back and this is how we're going to tighten them up in this sequence. It's not your star pattern, your cross pattern. We're going to start with this one here on the round corner. We're going to do that one. We're going to go to the other side of the round corner here and do this one. Now we're going to work our way up to the next one right here. And we're going to get that one a little bit snug. And then we're going to get this one a little bit snug. And we work our way up to the top here, back and forth. Now we're going up to the top. The reason we're doing this is because this case needs to go down evenly so that it's not warped and it's not a perfectly symmetrical case. So you're going to want to start on the part that's the most important where your torque biasing gear is and just keep going around in that direction there so that it seats evenly and smoothly on the round part down here on the bottom. As you work your way up, it'll do the same thing for everything else. I would go around these a uh, couple times just to make sure you got them all nice and tight. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assemble our cush drive. Um, I would strongly recommend that before you do that, you go ahead and wipe down all of this case completely really good. Wipe out all the bearings, any oil you have coming out of there or on here. Uh, very important, the shaft here. And then go wash your hands with soap and water. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we don't want any oil or contaminants on our cush drive at all. The clutch needs to remain dry and free of lubricant. If you get a little bit of oil on your elastomer, it's probably gonna screw it up. You're gonna have to clean it up really good with soap and water. But anyway, so clean that up, clean your hands, and let's go ahead and put the cush drive back together, make sure the shaft is clean as well. All right, so now that we're all nice and clean, to put our cush drive back together, we're gonna go ahead and start with our cush drive housing here that houses our drive key and our elastomer. Now this goes over the shaft like so, and then you're gonna go ahead and put your drive key in. And this drive key can only go in one way, guys. The slot's gotta go up for your pin. So you can drop this in here pretty much anywhere you like. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our elastomer in. Now if your drive key's up against one of these sides like that, go ahead and spin it back to the center, like so, and then you can put your elastomer in it like this. That just sits in there, just like that. Then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little pin that I told you not to lose, hopefully you didn't lose it. I didn't lose mine this time. Um, and we're going to stick that back through that hole and then we're going to line up the drive key so that it fits together like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our plastic washer with the funny looking tabs on it and they go down to the pin. That locks the pin in there nice and tight so all this is really tight when we put the rest of our housing on there and tighten it up. Now for the rest here, your housing I don't know if you guys can see this, but across the top it says Traxxas, and on the bottom there's this little symbol thing. Well, if you put that so that this symbol thing is on one of the outer holes where your spur gear goes, if you line that up with that and you're reading Traxxas upright, it's going to go on perfect every single time. That's how you line that up and get that on there, guys. Just line up that symbol with the outside hole, and Traxxas is up. Now you're good to go. Go ahead and put your screws back in here. And just like always, I would tell you to tighten them, tighten them up evenly, but I can't tell you to tighten them up in a star or a cross pattern because it's a triangle. So no matter which way you go, you're tightening it evenly, evenly anyway. So go ahead and get that down snug. Don't kill it, it's just plastic, but go ahead and get that down nice and snug. Okay, so now that we've got our cush drive assembly back together and nice and tight, we can go ahead and install our spur gear on here. And I'm gonna put the same one on here I had before. I really like the gear combination I'm running. I'm running a 1646 right now. Um, the 46 gives me enough speed and the 16 tooth pinion gives me enough torque for what I'm trying to do. And I'm, I'm basically just out there bashing guys, jumping and uh, tight turns and really fast straightaways, stuff like that. Playing around, having a good time. Now if I was on different tracks that required different gear changes, then yeah, you go ahead and change the gearing to match the track that you're at. But if you're not tracking and you're just out there bashing like me, I like the 1646, it just works great. Um, go ahead and inspect all your teeth before you put it back on. And we're gonna put these on here and once again, tighten them down evenly. Well, that's it guys. Got everything back on there nice and tight and it seems to, seems to spin really good. I, I'm really liking this. I mean, when I had the grease in here, it still gave me free movement. It was very little resistance, but with this, when I let go of it, it keeps going. With the grease, it would just stop immediately. I think this is gonna be great for the clutch and great for the motor. 
Um, one thing I want to tell you guys as you're putting it back in, make sure that your pinion gear is nice and tight and you have blue Loctite on it. See this right here? You've probably been wondering what that was. That's a mark where my pinion came off my motor shaft and it was rubbing here on the blue plate, the blue aluminum plate. So make sure you got Loctite on your pinion shaft. And when you're putting your pinion back together with your spur gear here, what you should do is take a piece of notebook paper like this and fold it in half. And then just go ahead and cut about a quarter inch piece of paper off the end like this. The reason why I'm telling you to do this is a lot of people ask me about the pinion and the spur gear placement. It's really not that difficult. Um, if you just take and when you're mounting up your motor, put your notebook paper up against your spur gear and then push your motor and your pinion over to touch your spur gear and go ahead and tighten it down in place. Once you've done that, now when you pull this piece of paper out after it's tight, you should have really nice crinkle marks on here. If you don't have crinkle marks on here from the gears, then it's not tight enough. If you pull it out and it rips, then it's too tight. It should be just a perfect crinkle on there. So that's how I do it every time, guys. Just a piece of notebook paper, fold in half, cut, drop it in there, put your spur gear or your pinion up against the spur, tighten it down and pull it out. That'll tell you what's going on. But um, for this gear combination right here with the 1646 I'm running, just so you guys know, I'm using the center position hole and it works great every time. You don't even have to use this plastic piece at all here. You could pop out that insert and just put a four millimeter washer on there that you can have the full adjustment anywhere you want to for your gear combinations. Just happens to work really good for me and what I'm doing. So I think that's about it, guys. You can go ahead and put it back in your car and bolt it all up and uh, do your notebook paper uh, spacing here between the pinion and the spur gear and I think we're good to go. God, I'm really, really liking this gel stuff, guys. That is, that is just awesome. Well, this video is coming to an end, guys. I'd just like to, to say once again, I'm sorry this video was so long. Um, it's really important to me that you guys have all the information and the knowledge that you need so that your rebuild is successful. Well, that pretty much wraps up the rebuild on our center diff, guys. Um, I want to take the time to tell you guys thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch another one of my videos. I hope this helps somebody out. Maybe you got some of the burning questions out of your head you didn't have the answers to. I know I learned a couple things, and I'm really, really liking this gel lubricant. Um, I'm going to go run it about 30 times and then tear it apart again and see how it's holding up. I'll let you guys know. Um, other than that, though, man... Go play, have a good time, have a great day. If you manage to get some video while you're out there bashing, send it to me. I want to see it. If you guys got any questions, please ask me. I will answer them for you. Any of your comments, I'll comment back. It might not be right away, but I promise I'll get back to you. Um, that's it, guys. Go play. I'm Travis with Upgraded RC. Peace out.